Welcome to Reconsider. I'm Bill Hartman. This is the podcast to challenge you to ask better questions, to look beyond traditional models of thinking and arrive at better health and fitness solutions. Reconsider is sponsored by Substance Nutrition. Go to substancenutrition.com to get your neuro coffee, better coffee, better brain, and synthesis, better protein, better body. Enter the coupon code RECON, R-E-C-O-N, and get free shipping on all of your orders. My goodness. Type hey, fast. Is it is it because you type like this? Is that That's not funny. <laughs> kind of piggybacking off of the last episode, we wanted to talk about um, just what people think is necessary for progress. The sort of the you know, the miscommunicated or like these negative Narr- I don't know what, what to call them, like negative narratives, uh, people thinking that like, you know, beauty equals pain and they have to hustle hard and blood, sweat and tears. And specifically the episode for this episode, we're talking about no pain, no gain. Right. Well, there's the there's the worst case scenarios. Sure. Where this is like legitimate physical discomfort associated with injury, which we're never talking about. Right. Well, that obviously like the plague. Um, but now we need, I think it's important that we distinguish between the discomfort that would be associated with the activities themselves. And then how do I distinguish when I have something that might require a little bit more attention? Yeah, because that's an important thing for people to understand right. the delineation between. Yeah. And we can, and that... it, it, I can make it really simple. Okay. I have I have I have a very specific test that you can that you can utilize. Um, so stay they, stay tuned until the end of the podcast to hear about Bill's very specific test. <laughs> well, I'm going to so tell we, you right now. No, 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 Bill. We got to play the game with these people. They, they otherwise they're just going to turn <laughs> the podcast off. That's not how this works. So that's, we have we have a format for now. We have a format for what we're going to talk about. We're going to. You, you gonna, seriously want me to hold off on this? Uh, seriously, we're going to hold off on it. Okay, we'll come All we'll right. come back to it. We're going to we're going to hint at it. All six people that are listening to this are going to wait. Yeah. Until... Well, now, gonna, now there's four gonna... because I, I've insulted their intelligence. They're just going to fast work. <laughs> well, well, yeah, they can because there will be there will be well uh, curated show notes right. eventually for this. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think well, if we're going to stick, we're going to be true to the format that I've decided is appropriate. <laughs> You're the producer here. Oh, I'm Mr. Manager. I'm, I'm following let's, you. Just say let's talk about. It's going to be similar to the last conversation about getting in shape and fitness, but let's talk about like where this whole idea might come from and then talk about what people's current understanding of it is probably or the based on the people that we talk to. So just as a as a review, Bill being a, a physical therapist by trade and myself being more of like a coach trainer type of uh, uh, trade, we we see people who come in who have very specific goals and are trying to get in shape or get out of pain and those things are very different, but people end up confusing them both. And the, the perception of that, which we're going to talk about, like you alluded to, with what pain is something actually like discomfort that's going to help you with progress? Or is it pain that's actually inter- complete interference and is the exact opposite of what you want to try to get to? Because right now, I think there's a big confusion in a lot of people's minds about like knee pain is OK because it allow- I need it because I, it's what happens when I run. Like every, the people think like everyone has back pain, everyone has knee pain when they run, and it's just something I have to I run through. I just need through. to work through it. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. Yeah, and, that, that, and that's, a. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a big part of my business because that's what people are, are trying to do. And be, it, here's the interesting thing. Um, you know, when you're in the purple room and you're working with, you're working with, a, with a patient and um, they don't express when they are having discomfort during an activity because they expect it to be uncomfortable. They expect yes. it, they expect the pain. And so they don't inform me. And so I am asking, I am continuously asking a question. Does it, I, so here's the question you don't ask. Does that feel all right? Because 
their perception is, it's like, okay, this pain is what I'm supposed to be feeling during this activity because it lets me know that I'm doing something effective. Like yeah. associating that type of discomfort with effectiveness in that context is a bad idea because that's what creates interference. Because most of the time when, when I'm working with someone and we're trying to restore movement capabilities, pain is actually interference to that because you will find another way to accomplish a task rather than using what we refer to as relative motion. So this is a normal movement behavior, right? You will find an alternative. So you will, you will create a substitution movement behavior, which almost looks like the normal behavior, but not quite. And that's a lo what a lot of people end up doing is they're using these compensations to move because they're constantly trying to move around these, these, this discomfort. And so, especially in, in, in my field, in the rehab field, um, it's important that you understand that in, in many cases, we don't want you to feel that discomfort. There are, there are times in rehab where discomfort is appropriate, and we can talk about that one too, but in a lot of situations, um, it actually teaches you a sequence of events or behaviors that ultimately become a secondary problem. And that's what we want to avoid. And, and so, so under those circumstances, um, I'm very clear that this cannot be um, associated with a, a focal, unrelenting, interfering type of discomfort. Yeah. Okay. And the, the useful, the useful wheristic or way of thinking or rule of thumb here that we're trying to get people to hang on to and understand as we progress through these topics of the podcast and as people start to learn to ask better questions and, and process this information better is what expectations am I managing for myself? Like what are the manage, what is the management of expectations from all different aspects? Like what, what do you expect as a, as a client? What should your trainer expect as a trainer? What should your therapist expect as a therapist? And then having everyone understand what that expectation is makes the conversation a lot more coherent um, right. because there is this, the, the faulty expectation that you need pain or you need discomfort or you need blood, sweat and tears in order to get any sort of progress. It's just not true. Right. And this is and this is about this open line of communication between coach, therapist and, and client or patient. Right. Um, but but it, it from a professional standpoint, it's it is me starting this conversation. Because again, the, the, every client, every person that's ever attempted a, a fitness program or had to go through rehab has a preconceived notion of what should be. My job is to establish that from the get-go. It's like, this is, this is what I want you to pay attention to. This is how I want it to respond. If it's not this, I need to know what it is you're experiencing so we can determine whether we're in a good place or we're not in a good place. Yeah. And that's that's sort of the goal of this podcast as well. So we're asking people to reconsider their preconceived notions about health, wellness, fitness. Right. And we're hopefully giving them not only just telling people what the mistakes might be, but we're giving them the tools to have them right. be able to ask other questions right. past this. And then if they want, you know, once once they are able to do that, they start having this a more discerning lens to look at all of the stuff through then that's when they can ping us at the podcast and send an email to askbillhartman at gmail.com. <laughs> but uh, we didn't even reference that in the last, maybe I'll just throw that in like the the end credits or something. But um, just throw it underneath. We're, we're talking about, so, so far to recap, we've talked about where the whole no pain, no gain uh, thought process might come from. Just being similar to like this sort of, military uh especially when it comes to military so much of like boot camp and going to seal team school and, and marines and all these things has to do with suffering and right. that, that, that indicates the effective change right that that would be yeah. the exception of, of many people and again th that, that's what i run into it's like people are expecting it's like so i'm rarely the first therapist that people see um in many cases thankfully i, I am the last but but um, but many cases it's like they've had an experience before and they're they're walking in with that and because they were allowed or it wasn't communicated effectively enough that hey you don't need to get beat up you don't need to feel this discomfort to actually get better and and again there's your there's your groundwork right there like like you got to start right there yeah so if we can if by this point of even just talking 
what is acceptable. That's yeah, what is acceptable and what's not going to interfere with your consistency and uh, your right. ability to progress. Uh, right. That's that's a good way to look at it from the starting. And then the, the perception and those expectations sort of man matching that historical context of like where it comes from and then people still thinking that like it's also all of these things that we're talking about it's so hard to get people to reconsider because of the messages that they're being just slapped in the face with oh, over yeah. and over again Absolutely. like their, their social media their phones all of the google ads uh facebook ads all the stuff is just constantly going to drive home these these false narratives in order again in order to sell you something and get you to buy something they're going to say that like you got to work hard and it's all about effort and it's in a lot of it i think comes from uh this uh, this idea between the military suffering and sort of like even professional sports you hear it a lot too a lot of the story of this you know guy coming up and the blood sweat and tears that went into you know all of their practice and l up late uh, at night shooting uh, baskets up early right. in the morning shooting baskets and it's like they they sweat and they bleed and they, you know, it's all these things that, that people think that, okay, well, well, I have to do that. But here's the thing though. I, I, I think the concern there is the undershoot of not doing enough. And so um, where I think that if you sort of overdo the emphasis, then your the effort is immediately higher. Right. And so the potential or an outcome might improve in, in certain situations, but then you have someone that works so far above where they should be um, in their early stages of development that, that, that there is where you get the overshoots. And now you've exhausted resources that you needed to recover, to, uh, to uh, rebuild your, your physical structure because exercise is going to affect that. Right? Yeah. And so then you're draining resources and then you, you just slowly create a, a deficit that gets bigger and bigger over time until you reach a threshold. And now you actually have something that is going to be true interference. And so this would be somebody that, that has to come see me. They say, you know, I was running five miles a day and then my knee started to hurt. So I kept running because it's just a knee, who cares? And then eventually they have to stop running because the knee, knee pain becomes so intensified. Yeah. And those those are the those are the people that come to you and they're like, well, by uh, by the second mile, it doesn't really hurt anymore. Right. Right. And then eventually, though, it, it starts to hurt more. My favorite phrase, my favorite phrase since the beginning of time um, as a, as a uh, physical therapist is it never hurt before. Yeah. Right. Because nobody ever has pain until they have pain. <laughs> right. Um, another point to make i think that is of significant value is that pain is a very subjective thing sure and and so what some people can tolerate um as associated with a benefit and and what other people can tolerate um are, is radically different and so we yeah need and let's let's use this as an opportunity for you to give us the test between what pain what actual pain is versus discomfort mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about that now. Yeah, so there, it's a it's a really simple test, and and um, it it's incredibly useful. It doesn't require a high skill level at all. And so what you do is you say, "I have pain here," so wherever it may be, and if you can put one finger on it, then chances are it's probably something you need to to get looked at because anything that would be that focal tends to have a a mechanical or structural influence. Now, it's not a 100% test, but the fact that something is is that narrow in focus and draws that much attention, it typically requires that you have to alter the way that you do something or you cannot do something, okay? And again, it comes to one finger. So um, the real common one is like anterior shoulder pain on somebody that lifts weights or works out or does a lot of push-ups or whatever it might be. And they can take one finger and they put it on the front of their shoulder and they go, it hurts right here. So if you can point to it and you can put one finger on it, it's probably something that, that you probably need to address, okay? On the other end of the spectrum, you can have a broad area of discomfort um, that would be important to also recognize if it is continuous. Okay. Right. 
But that would be different than someone having like sore hips from squatting or sore quads from hiking or something Correct. like that, and it being a it general helps, area. It helps distinguish between between that. Yeah, and that's that. That is a really good useful. That's a useful model for people to use in terms right. of like, is the pain that I'm experiencing the discomfort of the, or the result of the action that led up to this, right. or is it something that's consistent, like you're saying? And seems to have it seems to be more like an acute coming on uh, in a short time frame, and it has a very focal right. uh, point of of sensation. Right. The, the the focal nature of things is actually crazy useful. Um, there's a, there's a you know there's certain um, batteries of tests that they will recommend in physical therapy to help localize um, where the the mechanical element may be the greatest influence. And honestly, there's hardly a difference between like a battery of four tests that affect a specific area and taking one finger and go, hey, Bill, it hurts right here. Right. OK, so we've talked about where where this no pain, no gain might come from or some of the parts where it comes from. We've talked about what the current perceptions and preconceived notions of most people that we see are, you know, the fitness folks, the people who have pain and that have tried to get in shape and have failed in a way uh, and are now dealing with pain that oh it's funny because the you know the no pain no gain it's like this sort of pain has just stopped any ability to gain right it's it's right. quite the opposite um and yeah. i mean i feel like we would we're we're missing an opportunity to uh plug the bill hartman's book all, all, gain, <laughs> all gain no pain which can be purchased on amazon.com yeah i'll throw i'll throw a link i'll throw we'll throw a link in the show till there um, it's, it, it's you it's now, you wrote a book basically asking people to reconsider this idea. Right. So so let, let's, let's, I'm going to give you 30 seconds on this and then I want, don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> so so the question that I always get. So so somebody goes through physical therapy, especially somebody that's been active before they're they're a chronic exerciser and they want to get back to their specific activity and then um, they get discharged. Like, so they've gone through therapy, they're ready to go and they're ready to, to progressively return back to their previous activities. And so um, they, they would ask a question and it's always the same question. What do I do now? And they're asking this question as if I could answer it in the next 20 seconds. And you can't. So it takes 20 chapters. So it takes 20 chapters to understand the, the whys and the wherefores. And then there's another series of hows. And so that's what the book is for. It's for after you have gone through that process everything appears to be where it needs to be for you to sp begin a progressive return to activities. And this is kind of how you do it. Yeah. And I think that this, this podcast will actually be a very good uh, compliment to that book in terms of how we're, because the questions that you'll end up having to ask through all those chapters will be with you. The conclusions you came to for those chapters were based on similar lines of questions and yeah. ways like similar means of questioning. Right. Right. It's, it's, it's about understanding. It's about understanding the resources that you have to contribute to an activity. And then how do you manage those resources effectively to return to those activities? So there you go. Yeah. And that that statement right there sums up pretty much everything we would want to ever talk about when it comes to training or wellness. Does that mean that we're done? Um, no, I mean, I think I think that <laughs> we could finish now, but I think that what we're asking the perspective we're trying to offer i feel like we can maybe come up with a little more um in terms of what to reconsider and how to okay. reconsider well hang on well let's let's talk about the good kind like the like good kind like, good kind of pain yeah 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 like so like but, like soreness or you and mean when like, we say uh, good kind it doesn't mean it feels good it just means it's the kind that contributes to progress yeah let's call it discomfort instead of pain Okay. <laughs> well, because if, um, if we're using pain in a medical, in a physical therapy context, I don't think it should even exist in the fitness context. I think that is a helpful way of sort of delineating the two terms so that people fair. don't try to carry it with them into fitness. I'll be okay. I'll be okay with that. Okay. I'll be okay, with that. Um, okay. So simple rule. Um, discomfort that dissipates very, very quickly after discontinuing the activity and does not return is usually okay okay 
And now this is not passing the finger test. So, so again, the finger test is still applicable for intermittent discomfort. Okay, so we got to be really, really careful with that. But um, most people that have gone through some form of localized exercise or a high effort behavior that lasted for multiple seconds up to minutes have experienced the burning association in the muscle itself, that burning sensation. Okay, that is typically acceptable because as soon as you stop that activity, it immediately starts to dissipate. Okay, so everybody's probably going to experience that at some point in time, right? And so, and it, but it's easily distinguishable because it does dissipate very, very quickly. Okay, that is that is probably more of a metabolic influence that you are experiencing, that your body recognizes and sends a signal and says, "Hey, we need to be really, really careful about this." But it stops you from doing stupid stuff too, right? Because let's just say that you could exceed the the output capabilities of that muscle, and you could tolerate more burning sensation than everybody else, you can actually cause, cause a problem there. So it's not that you don't disrespect it, it's just that you expect it to happen. And as long as it dissipates quickly, you're usually okay. Okay, yeah. I mean, there's the, um, I guess there's probably two more things I wanted to talk about. Uh, one of them being sort of understanding um, the the opposite end of this and how people a lot of times when people think about we're trying to offer like a reasonable way to think about this and sometimes people go too far in the opposite direction so all pain no gain or no pain no gain becomes like i'm not going to do anything but just you know lay on the ground on a foam roller and do some breathing activities and then that's it right so it's it's uh it's important to think about it. a good way to think about it is like what's the What's the minimum viable uh, pro program that I can do that's going to get me to progress towards my goal? And then as you get more experience, you can find out what the, if we think about it as like a continuum or like uh, having a floor and a ceiling, the ceiling being like the maximum tolerable dose of what you can do. And you never want to leave that, that room, like where the, the floor is the minimum viable product or the minimum performance that you need in order to keep progressing linearly and then the maximum tolerable. So it's like in, in the context of like squatting, let's say like your one set of squats a week might allow you to continue your progress, but 40 sets of squats a week is going to hurt you. So it's, if you can, if you can stay within that sort of, that's a very specific, uh, and not, you can, shouldn't be generalized example, but that would be like a, a good way to sort of think about where you need to land. Right. But see, this goes back, this goes back to our discussion on the, on the last episode where we were talking about um, the experiment. This sure. is, this is, so you are, you are in a constant state of running an experiment, right? Yeah. And, the, and those and then, boundaries that we're talking about are how you make it safe. Right. There's your safe, there's your safe to fail range, right? So you start with the minimum, minimum dose, and then you progressively expose yourself to, to more. Um, it's almost hormetic, you know? Yeah, it is. It's, it in the, is. In the representation, um, right? Because it, we, the, the, the premise would be that, okay, the, the body reconstructs itself um, in a, in a stronger representation to minimize the previous insult. So it's pure defense under the, under the circumstances. Um, which is why you have the responses that you do after exercise in many cases where your your systems are actually in a protective mode. You've, you've insulted the system to some degree. The systems will respond in some degree. And then in the process of reconstruction, they are they are coming back stronger. So this, and it would be every system in your body under the circumstances, your immune system would be influenced. It's not just the aesthetic. It's not just body composition. It's not just the muscular system or the connective tissue behaviors. It's every, every system in your body would respond to those activities. Yeah. Anytime we use fancy words like that, Bill, we should have to fix our glasses. Which which fancy word did I use? Hormetic, hormesis. Hormetic? You, should have, you should have to. You should have to do this. Oh, well, isn't it? Is it, <laughs> is it? is it tilt down or is it tilt back? <laughs> no, the tilt down is more like sassy. Oh, the, okay. The <laughs> correction is is the correction is more of like the the intellectual nerdy. I got you. Thing to do. See, I, you know. I only need to wear them down here because I can see everything out in front of me. I just can't see down. Is that is that an old thing? It, thanks. Thank you. 
Thank you. I just want to remind I just want to remind our listeners and viewers that Bill is could be my dad. So. <laughs> oh, that, there's that. Okay. <laughs> the uh, well, there was one more thing I wanted to say. What did I want to say? Sure. Um, okay. So the idea of progress and what and success yes. and what th what seems to determine those things are your ability to stay consistent yep. and to have continued and progressive effort towards whatever the goal is and anything that's going to get in the way of your consistency or the efforts that you can put into it it's going to be in direct interference of progress Correct. and pain is one of those things we've talked about already like it's going to change the way that you move and it's going to more importantly not allow you to continue to train Correct. Yeah. So, you know, I, I get that. I get that. I see a lot of athletes. And so I get that question a lot. It's like, well, how much am I allowed to tolerate? And it's, and it's like, well, you shouldn't have to tolerate really any right now. The level of athlete then comes into play where I have a professional um, that is coming in and it's like, OK, uh, if it's their job. And so we make some exceptions under those circumstances. But if I take a high school athlete, the first thing I ask them is like, well, what is your contract with Nike say? Um, you know, in regards to your your need to have to perform at this game when you're 15 years old. And then they, they go, well, I'm, I don't have a contract. And it's like, okay, so then right now, the biggest concern is that we get you as healthy as possible so that two years from now, when say the scholarship offer is coming around, it's like, then you're ready and, and able to participate, right? The, ur the sense of urgency, you know, for, for, for some of these kids is because they're exposed to so many um, things where actually players do play hurt and then they they make the assumption that that's expected of them as well and so we need to make sure that that we manage that situation um rather than allow it to perpetuate yep so a lot a lot of the same things that we talked about in the first episode yeah it's like know, knowing the knowing the full story knowing the the intention and the end goal in mind and sort of you know developing as much contextual information that's going to help you make these decisions to formulate safe experiments that allow you to have consistency and progress towards that goal that you set out to change. Correct. Cool.